My name is Otno. Hello, welcome to today's video. It's going to be a bit different. The next two videos are going to basically be the same video. It is going to be about World War II airfields in Norfolk. So, without any further ado, let's go to our first airfield. Film in the middle of winter, that would be fine. <sighs> I really wish I stayed home for this. Could have just animated it anyway. So the first stop on our airfield tour, Alton. It's parental airfields with Swanton, Morley and Swannington. And over the course of the war, was home to hundreds of different units. <laughs> Over the course of the war, Alton was used as bomber command, but towards the end was handed over to maintenance command and the 247 maintenance unit. Alton is now used as farmland. On to the next field after that quick time lapse. Uh, this is the Saxe Warpair field. It was home to the 51st Squadron or the York Zone Squadron. Its parental base was Marham, which is now the biggest airfield in Norfolk and one of the main bases in Norfolk. This isn't actually the airfield. The airfield is over there, but I'm not allowed to get over there and I can't get over there, so I'm here instead. On to the next airfield. This is the Matlask Airfield. It was originally a member of Fighter Command. All the units that resided here are on screen now. It didn't have a parental airfield because it was so important that it was the parental airfield. Guys, it's wet now. It's not only cold like earlier, it's now got wet. This isn't nice. Anyway, this airfield is the Suffield airfield and it was never used. That's because it didn't exist. This was a decoy airfield. Just didn't exist, nothing happened. There's nothing here, it's just nothing, just thought I'd add a bit of, you know, um, variety to the thing. And also, it's not there either, it's up there. Yeah, that's right, I lied again. <laughs> Um, this, this is the, I don't want to stay here too long because it's wet and cold, but this is the way Bourne Airfield, it was home to anti-cooperation flights T and X. It's now home to the Kelling Model Flying Club and the Muckleburg Collection. North, 
England's largest private military collection. Um, now on to Feltwell. That's going to be a lot bigger and hopefully it's not as wet. About six months ago, I released my Nowhere video, and I said, people often say they're in the middle of nowhere, but I'm quite literally in the middle of nowhere. But today, I'm actually in the middle of nowhere. Also, all these shots will be filmed around this house. Got no significance, it's just this house. This is RAF Feltwell, or at least the pre-war site and World War II site of RAF Feltwell. The actual RAF Feltwell is down the road in Feltwell, but it's now occupied by the United States Army Air Force, or USAF. Those big white orbs you see are moisture covers. They protect the antennas and radar dishes from lightning, snow, rain. Feltwell was a perfect place for an airfield. High up, barren, flat. That's why it was a, one of the five pre-existing airfields in Norfolk before the war. First opened in a, the April of 1937, Feltwell was sorted into Bomber Command and the Number Three Group, along with Methwold, Lake and Heath, Milden Hall, and Newmarket. Because Feltwell was constructed before the war, the construction crews and architects were able to take their time in designing. The buildings were tall brick red brick buildings with a high class of comfort. However, they were not as, as aesthetically pleasing as the officers' quarters or mess halls. The prominent features of Feltwell were the five large C-class buildings that were over 50 feet tall. The first unit to arrive at Feltwell was the 214 with the Handley Page Harrows. These were the first aircraft of the newly formed Bomber Command. These brand new aircraft featured twin-engine wings and powered gun turrets at the front and rear ends. Even though these bombers were brand new and had some fancy new technology, they would soon be replaced because in the summer of peace, both the squadrons were replaced with Vickers Wellingtons, just like the pub. Did I forget to mention that the number 37 squadron had been formed from the 214's B flight only a few weeks before? Over the next three years, Feltwell will become a Wellington's only station, and on the 18th of December 1939, it was given its first mission. Number 37 Squadron was due to bomb the German coast. Their message came through as follows. They found the Kriegsmarine, and we're going to Wilhelmshaven to attack them. And at 9.30am that morning, six of Feltwell's Wellingtons would join 18 others from Honington and Lakenheath. By 12.30, the German coast was in sight. It was a clear and cloudless day, unlike today, and it was perfect for bombing. However, German Messerschmitts were waiting for them. The Wellingtons had been picked up by the Germans' experimental Freya radar stations on the islands of Heligoland and Vangaruga. 45 minutes later, the warships were in sight, but as they were considered too close to land, squadron leader Wing Commander Richard Kellett ordered the Wellingtons not to bomb. The Wellingtons managed to survive the heavy flak barrage, but just as they were returning, the group were ambushed by a large amount of Messerschmitt 109s and 110s. Because the 37 squadron were at the rear, they were the first to be attacked and heavily damaged. By the end of the Nazi attack, 
12 Wellingtons had been shot down and 13 enemy aircraft had been destroyed. The Wellingtons were just a few miles off the North Norfolk coast when two of them crashed into the sea and one had made an emergency landing at Coltishall. All six of the Feltwell Wellingtons had been destroyed and only a few of their crews had survived as prisoners of war. The Battle of Heligoland Bight became one of Bomber Command's most significant battles of the war and it was one of the first named air battles. It brought to a halt daylight missions of heavy bombers without fighter escort and it exploded the myth of the Wellington's invincibility in close formation. The lesson learned in December's raid became a major consideration in the ultimate strategy of Bomber Command, night bombing. In the first few months of 1940, a brand new flight of New Zealanders arrived with their Wellingtons. They were quickly sorted into number 75 squadron. And with the opening of the Norwegian campaign, both number 37 and number 75 squadrons became very busy, performing bombing raids on Norway and Denmark. Both these squadrons were involved in a raid on the 12th of April 1940, directed at Staringer Harbour. This raid proved to be one of the RAF's biggest operations so far, and on this occasion only one of the Feltwell's Wellingtons failed to return. The 37th Squadron was taken off operations to prepare itself for transfer to the Middle East in November 1940. The 37th Squadron replacements quickly arrived, the number 57 Squadron. They, came with, they were equipped with brand new Wellingtons, but were almost immediately transferred to Feltwell's satellite station in Methwold. One of the New Zealanders' most famous pilots, Flight Lieutenant Fred Popeye Lucas, had been on many missions such as Hamburg, Dusseldorf, Bremen, Lübeck and Gotha. He was taken off duties to become an instructor on Wellingtons, but was transferred back to Feltwell with the rank of squadron leader and was involved in the famous raid on Brest in 1941. The last big operation of the war that Feltwell took part in was in the late May of 1942 and they formed just a small part of Air Marshal Harris's Operation Millennium. Towards the end of 1942 it was decided that number three unit would at last be rewarded with new planes, Avro Lancasters. A training and conversion unit was needed for the pilots and crews of these planes and it was decided that this unit unit was to be set up at Feltwell. From December 1943 to the end of the war, Feltwell was solely used as a Lancaster training site and it affectionately became known as the finishing school. Sorry Snoopy, you can't go with us. Dogs aren't allowed on the school bus. Woof. Blah, 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 blah,